instrument therapy or radic therapy will take part of this approach. So you see from epithelial, not epithelial lymph lymphomas, and uh, the approach of these uh, tumors is not standard for all of them. I can't talk in 45 minutes about how I manage all of these tumors. So I select my experience in two types, but I take a global view about how we manage these tumors. So to start with uh, symptoms, most of them, is as, uh, few of them, 10% asymptomatic. This is the symptoms they have in um, malignant tumors and external uh, swallowing, double vision, um, neuropathies. This means malignancy, unless there is very big benign tumor, but this is for malignancy more than the um, benign tumors. Cervical metastasis is less than 10% uh, and distant metastasis less than 7% in global. CT scan is mandatory for these patients because the framework of the bony origin for orbit, skull base, ethmoid, trigopalatine, and sinuses. We have to see all the, the margin of the bone in these patients. Contrast reduced tumor vascularity and the relation with carotid artery. MRI better for soft tissue. It differentiate between tumor and soft uh, tissue from secretion as well. I put some, some examples now. <laughs> if there is invasion to dura or to the orbit, there is better view in MRI. No radiation, no artifact with dental fillings. More expensive, but we can manage cost effective of this uh, uh, procedure. So I give you some examples of uh, this tumor. You see this is a huge meningioma. This is not malignant tumor. However, you see that there is important edema around. Even if it's not malignant, it's very big and we have to remove it. So the, the issue that from approach, uh, open approach, you go directly to the tumor. However, this is a um, big tumor and we try, uh, we try to do it endoscopically. So we harvest the flap, I, I skip this because, and the, luckily for patient, this tumor is very soft. So this is save our life. So if the, the, the tumor comes with suction and we can remove all the tumor, this, this is the best way to remove it in the sculpture. So we fill the space of the tumor, we reconstruct with facial lata, we have the, the uh, nasocetal flap repaired. And this is the final result. You see, we remove the huge tumor from the node. This is the flap complete resection of the tumor. One year after surgery, everything is okay. But this is not the case for the malignant tumor. Malignant tumor is a headache for all of us, for the patient and for the, the surgeon. So as in this COVID and rhinology, I define the transnasal endoscopic, but I know that there is limitation for this, still there, Sublabial lateral rhinotomy combination of them. We do a lot of combination transcranial, transnasal. Orbital extenturation, it's huge debate. There is a lot of uh, studies about this, but we have a not clear algorithm for, for this. You can be more aggressive in your surgery and remove the eye in the first attempt, and you can wait to see how your procedure and the, the, the surgery goes. And this is the dilemma. 
the end block excision. So an, an external approach, if you cut and remove it completely, you have margin of this. However, in, in, in this copy, there is not uh, a valuable this uh, end block excision. So, but there is uh, no evidence that the working increased the risk of recurrence. We did a lot of the working of the tumor, then we start removing from periosteum from one side to the opposite side and remove all the uh, skull base with no high risk of recurrences. It's very important, My uh, our colleagues from uh, Italy, Dr. Castelnovo, recommends us to do second opinion for all tumors. It's very important. If you have any doubt about the behavior of your tumor, of the tumor, ask for second uh, uh, opinion. So we discuss with our pathologist about this, and we send the sample to another center and take another opinion of this tumor. It's very important because, as you see, there is a variety of marker biomarkers for tumors. So if you are not available to do it, like in this scheme, then ask for second opinion. So, and this is like very sensitive issue. You have to talk with pathologists to discuss with them because I can't tell him, send, please send it to, this is like routine, um, procedure in, in your department to ask for second opinion. But anyway, it's not so easy to convince them. And if we talk about general uh, tumor, this is big, big data from Italy and uh, five centers around the Euro. And you can see that um, for survival, for 10 years after surgery, that melanoma and neuroendocrine is a bad tumor. However, the first one in the top is tissue neuroblastoma. So imagine that uh, the survival rate 10 years in, in general in more than uh, one, uh, 1,300, there is different survival rate in between all of these uh, tumors. And histology, it's very important if there is high or low grade of subtype of uh, histology. And the same of the open approach, if there is free margin or affected margin. So the margin is very important even for endoscopic uh, approach. So focusing in, in malignant tumor, I will be talking about ITAC and stationaroblastoma. So starting with ITAC, there is two different classification of, from more less aggressive to more aggressive papillary clonic solid mucinous and mixed type. And there is another one from klein Sasser and uh, Schroeder. They classified in papillary tubular, cylindrical, alveolar global cell, Signet range cell is very important in this uh, patient. More signet uh, cells, more aggressive tumor, and finally transitional. And there is like correlation between of these uh, two classification. First two uh, uh, matched with the first three of the burns. Uh, alveolar and signet trains with mucinoid and transitional with mixed type. So it's similar from one to another one. It's um, high grade malignancy, 50% of local recurrence, 8% in left lymph node metastasis, 13% uh, distance metastasis, relation with wood dust exposure will differentiate uh, papillary ITAC endolent cores and solid motionate poor outcome. So this is general view of uh, ITAC tumors. This is about uh, in, in monohistochemical staining. So CK20 
uh, as seen in most of these cells, CDX2 stained and, uh, and tumor nuclei, and uh, CK7 is variable considering tumor cells. So this is very important, three markers for this uh, 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 ITAC tumor. And I, I, I mentioned before that uh, papillary is different from uh, mesenary, so the survival is totally different in between of both of them, solid and mesenary in the middle. So histology is very important to bring up and discuss the patient, how about survival rate, even for one single tumor, oh, we are talking about ITAC, you see that there are three different types and three different survival rate. And how we manage it, endoscopic or uh, external. So this is a nice study about uh, more than uh, 450 patients um, from 10 centers, and they compare uh, endoscopic, and they conclude that endoscopic seems that better than uh, external. There is two uh, independent factors for recurrences, negative margins, absence of signet ring cells. So histology, histology, and histology. So it's very important to take this concept and to talk with the pathologist about this uh, concept. Another study about if you go unilateral or bilateral. So this is a, a nice study from Italian group. Um, they compared unilateral, unilateral resection versus uh, bilateral. In, in, in regarding survival rate, more comorbidity is similar, uh, but if you can see overall survival, disease free and uh, recurrence, there is no differences. However, hospitalization and olfactory preservation is better in unilateral um, resection. So we, 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 we should balance in between aggressive and ecologic aspect. I'm not worried about the olfaction. I discuss with the patient. So if I'm comfortable with removing tumor with uh, only from one side, I do it. If I can't do it because there is small space, I can't manage in, inside, I remove both of them. I reconstruct the skull base. I discuss with the patient that the olfaction, even in unilateral uh, resection, the olfaction is not so good. Once you open the dura, the olfaction and the olfactory work is different. So, olfaction compared to oncological concept, we have to discuss with the patient. I present this case, uh, female, 66 uh, years, no exposure to wood. Uh, typical uh, symptoms, and this is the uh, endoscopic, sorry. So this is, you see, it's not papilloma, it's very soft. This is the MRI. More right side than left side. <laughs> There is problem with uh, her eye before surgery. It's not related to surgery because she is blind, uh, blinded from one side. And this is the histopathology. You see popular aspect of uh, and positive for immunohistemical uh, marker. 
So we start with the bulking of the tumor. I remove the superior part of the nasal septum because it was involved as well. I remove, but uh, what we talk about, if I can do it without the working the tumor, I go ahead. However, if the tumor is very big, I can't reach the lateral wall to go superiorly. Uh, I can't do it without removing the tumor. I like to do uh, draft type three in all my patients in skull based surgery. I remove the mucosa to avoid mucosal in the future. So I have very good control if I do this from anterior to posterior. So even to avoid complication and post radiation or any complication, I have good view for the frontal sinus. And in some cases I use it at a, a gate for a pericranial flap. I like it more than um, multi-layer reconstruction, more in patient with um, post radiation because the extraction with, at least in my hand, um, I prepare a pericranial flap. So we remove, develop the tumor, we remove the tumor completely, and we reconstruct even with facial alta flat if it's available, or with the, in this case we, I escape this, uh, and this is the, the flat, it's very big, very thick, and, and this way I avoid a lot of headaches and the post radiation in these patients. This is the, after radiation, you see this is the flap, a very nice uh, scar. This is uh, immediately after uh, uh, radiation and this is six years after surgery, so it's very nice. Coronal incision is not so important for the patient if you do it Probably. So it's not uh, issue to discuss if I reconstruct with flap, multilayer, or with the uh, pericranial. The most important thing that we must do uh, complete reconstruction of this uh, patient, mainly because we know that most of them will receive radiotherapy in the post operative uh, time. This is uh, ITAC uh, tumors, and now we're talking about olfactory neuroblastoma or stesioneuroblastoma, uncommon neoplasia, uh, neoplasm, locally aggressive, um, the age, no difference in between uh, male and female, no causes. Most of them come to our to see us in advanced stage. C or D, and the lymph node in 20 or 30 percent. This metastasis, uh, 15 percent. B, unilateral or bilateral? CT scan, I'll show you the CT scan directly. You see, CT scan is very important to see if there is um, destruction of the skull base, lamina papyracea, you see. And this is a bone window and in soft tissue window that you see that there is intracranial extension. This is the muscle. We, so in this case, MRI could bring more detail if this muscle is uh, infected with the tumor this way. So this is the C scan, it's more than the bone. MRI for T1, we have homogeneous. If there is a necrosis, hemorrhage inside the tumors, you can see. We can differentiate between tumor and uh, mucus in this patient with T2. So MRI is very useful to see the extension of the tumor. 
and mainly for Dura involvement. For example, you see there is uh, Dura involvement in this, there is intracranial uh, extension. Dura, this is a bad case if there is Dura uh, involvement in this patient because I don't see that I can remove this Dura endoscopically. See this patient will receive radiotherapy and we can see or go to the open approach we discussed in the board about this. We can differentiate between tumor and mucus. You see the extraction, infiltration of the of the tumor and the uh, intracranial. Then we classify the the tumor depends on Kaddish, A, B, C, D. A, tumor uh, in the nasal cavity, B, involved more of uh, one sinus, extension to the, uh, beyond the nasal cavity and the sinuses, and extension and the cardiac to lymph node and uh, discuss um, metastasis. This is very important as well because it gives us more idea about the post-operative uh, uh, chemotherapy or radiotherapy, HIMS from one to three, to three, uh, uh, four, three and four is more aggressive. Four, it's mainly with the chemo radiation, hurts a lot in adjuvant or neoadjuvant uh, therapy. This is the survival for different uh, uh, stages of uh, uh, neuroblastoma. You see the better uh, in Kaddish for A than C. And uh, for big series that the surgery with or without radiation and uh, chemotherapy, they, they use it in most cases, radiotherapy alone in less, in very few cases, and chemo only for uh, palliative uh, uh, patients. So you see that for with more uh, Kaddish C and D, more radiotherapy, it decreased the risk of death. Uh, indicator for tumor greater than four centimeters, positive margins, and high-grade tumor. So in these patients, we indicate uh, radiotherapy. You see that, and the difference between A and B in surgery and uh, uh, radiation, there is no difference in survival rate. However, in, in Kaddish C and D, there is difference between receiving and not receiving radiotherapy. And this is a favor of uh, post-operative uh, radiotherapy. So Kaddish C and D and uh, combination with, with uh, 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 chemotherapy is favored to the post-operative radiotherapy. And chemotherapy for, the, uh, for advanced uh, stages, that's C and D. The advantage of uh, chemo in advanced tumors, uh, C and D, or HIMS 3 and 4, to prevent uh, metastasis or palliative uh, uh, tumor. And uh, the dilemma on this patient is about lymph uh, nodes. So most of them goes to the level two, and some of them level one, three, and uh, retropharynx. And this is uh, uh, different stages with uh, metastasis from uh, local or uh, distance, you see with more uh, Kaddish, Kaddish C, more percentage of patients with uh, uh, metastasis, lymph node or distance metastasis. And this is the survival, if there is lymph node or not, there is huge difference in survival uh, uh, rate. So uh, elective neck irradiation in zero 
there is huge discussion about this, surgery in, in zero or radiation in zero. Uh, it's not translated to survival benefits. It's recommended for advanced stages and young patients. So, uh, we have seen patients with uh, 10 years after surgery with metastasis. So, and even with neck surgery, so they have neck dissection 10 years after surgery and metastasis. So this is a uh, huge discussion, even in, uh, in zero, there is um, discussion about radiation or um, uh, wait and see or surgery. Bad prognosis for uh, uh, dura involvement. Survival rate is uh, less than uh, without. So this is the first, you see that 20 years ago, um, for five patients, this is from Cassiano from US, and he recommended uh, uh, use a endoscopic uh, approach for these patients. Now we have series, like I mentioned before, a lot of them, the majority of them, by endoscopic. And this is the, the, the difference between uh, endoscopic versus uh, open in Caddish B and C. You can see the survival rate is different from one and another one. And this is my scheme, how I follow this uh, patient. So I do endoscopy for all of them. MRI two to four months after completion of the therapy. Every six months for five years, and then annually for the patient lifetime. Annual chest radiography and PET scan. This is cost effective, I do it for station and post therapeutic restation. Um, I know that in, in some uh, center they do it routinely each year, but you have to balance in between cost effective uh, it scan in this patient. I don't think that it can provide more information than MRI <coughs> in this patient since you have endoscopy and uh, MRI in this patient, and I think it's quite enough to control these patients. So this is patient with uh, testicular neuroblastoma, small one. It's not a typical one that come unless it bleeds. If it bleeds, it's, the patient is lucky in this patient. If it's, it's small, uh, we do a um, nasoceptive plug from the opposite side. We send uh, margins from this intraoperatively to see if there is any contamination of the tumor. We have with the plug. Let me advance, please. Then we remove the, the tumor. So this is olfactory valve. We try to get good margin and send it to frozen section. Another case. So this is. I tell you the approach depends on the space and the the size of the tumor. They take on account the Oncological concept, you see this This is a unilateral one. So I try to remove everything from the left side. This is the tumor. Again, I try to... And this way I, I take off the cristagalli. This is the bone of the cristagalli. And I try to remove the tumor completely because there is... Um, intracranial extension of this tumor. Again, I, I like to control the frontal uh, sinus in this patient. This is the tumor. 
we remove it completely. The patient did very well and she received radiotherapy in the post-operative. This is the tumor bilateral. So what I do from orbit to orbit, I drill the skull base, I remove the skull base completely. I try to remove the crystal at the end of the procedure and because it's, it gets unstable. As you see, if I try to dissect now from periosteum from this side and the opposite side, it's very hard to do it. This is what I said. I tried to leave some piece of, of bone in the anterior aspect and try to pull the cristagalli <coughs> from both sides. I dissect because if I want to reconstruct the skull base, I need a complete exposure to the dura from both sides and reconstruct. This is the olfactory valve. You see there is good margin from the tumor to the... This is the reply, I scan this one. <coughs> then I introduce a flap. And this is big, big flap. Again, this is my way to do it. I know that uh, colleagues of mine do it the endoscopically for uh, with multi-layer or uh, another uh, um, material. So I'm confident more with the uh, bricranial flap to reconstruct the skull base because I know that this patient will receive radiotherapy. And this is, let's see if I can. Only remarks how I do the <laughs> nasal flap in these patients. So again, I like hydrodite suction. This is the main artery. I work is work on it. I harvest the flap. If I need larger flap, I go to the skin of the columella. If I need a wider flap, I go to the inferior meatus. And this, I, I get a wider flap. And the issue I put this that it seems that. Uh, Nasoceptor flag doesn't work for anterior skull base. So you can see even this is animation, I remove the tumor. But what my point is, if you go laterally and release the flag from the spinopalatine artery and maxillary artery, you get larger flag and you can reach the posterior wall of the frontal sinus. So again, white flap, laterally, large flap to the skin, and go to the pterygopalatine fossa. And finally, bricranial flap. So bricranial flap. I do coronal incision. I keep these arteries, deep artery of the supraorbital, supratrochlear. <coughs> I can do it unilateral or bilateral. I can do it endoscopically if I can go through the small incision on on the on the front. This is the I, uh, th uh, through the illumination of the frontal sinus. I know where is the, the frontal sinus. I drill it. I do the osteotomy. I introduce the flap. It's very important. I mark both of them with black and uh, blue to know where is the right and left uh, uh, margin. Otherwise, once it's in the nose, it's very, very hard to know where is left, where is right. So you know that I pull both of them like a sheet like this, and I put it under lay or on lay, depends on the uh, place. So it works very well, you see, there is no complication in the post operative because I removed the, the mucosa of the frontal sinus from the osteotomy and from the draft type 3 when I do it, and it works very well in my hands, mainly for big, big tumors with uh, what I expect to, see, to do uh, radiotherapy in the post operative time.
Finally, I would like to thank all my team uh, from